As a student who's currently studying computer science at the University of Bath, and one that is currently working as a software engineer in my industrial placement, I'm always asked lots of different questions about programming. From questions about what kind of programming language you should learn, to how to learn that programming language, and to just general ideas about what I can program in certain languages. I've also been asked several times to make videos about programming, and that's something that I don't really know how to do. I mean, I've watched plenty of programming videos, and I've found every single one of them intently boring. I'm of the fond belief that you can't learn how to program by reading a book or by just just looking at someone teaching you how to add things together in a piece of code. Programming isn't about what language you use or how the language works, it's about how you solve problems. And the way you learn how to solve problems is by getting out there and finding problems to solve. Online there is this thing called the Codility Challenge and you can find it at this web address here. But what is the Codility Challenge, Jamie? This challenge is a short programming challenge that was released onto the internet every like six weeks, I think. And it gives you a problem. You can use almost any programming language from C to Java and all you have to do is solve the problem within the time scale, and that's two hours. So in this video, I'm going to show you how how I solved the first Codility Challenge of this year. Codility Challenge Argon. The challenge text is going to be in the description down below, but I'll try and summarise it for you here. You essentially have to read in a pattern of ones and zeros. You then have to find the longest possible solution, where if you were to split it into two, first half will be majoritively zeros, and the second half will be majoritively ones. Now this doesn't have to be a halfway split, it could be that much of that one, and only that much of that one. That doesn't even make sense, it's quite difficult to actually paraphrase the challenge. It's in the description, go and read it. Now the way that I'm solving this problem is not in the web browser, which is the way that you're supposed to do it. I'm actually solving it within Visual Studio because it's easier for me to show you and record it if it's in Visual Studio as opposed to it being in Google Chrome. I'm also lazy and I'm used to auto corrections and stuff like that, so it's just easier for me to use Visual Studio. So I set up a little project ahead of time which would enable me to run unit tests, which would essentially just test the outcome based on the automatic tests that the Codeility Challenge will run for you automatically. Even though I'd set up all the legwork so that I could start the programming outside of the web browser and in Visual Studio, I still abide by the two hour time limit. And I just jumped into the programming. Now obviously because I had to prepare this video and all of that kind of stuff, I actually had sight of what the challenge would be ahead of time, which meant that I had an idea of a solution before I actually started and I actually spent a good amount of time trying out this solution. Now I quickly found a way of figuring out whether it was optimal or not, whether given a list of eight days, whether the number eight was possible. But I didn't know how to then solve it for if the case was actually seven or if it was six. For example, if I'd read eight and realized that there was no optimal split in that list, then logically I would have to try seven. So how would I do that? Would I go down to this seven or would I go down to that seven? And I realized about halfway through that I had to rejig how I was going to do this. And that's something very important when you come to problem solving. You can't get attached to your first idea. You can't just fall in love with this solution and think that it must work and then just try and hack it into working. You have to be able to realize when you're starting to go down a rabbit hole and when you just kind of need to take a step back and go, you know what, this isn't working. I'm going to think of a new idea. So about halfway through the solution, I changed route and I leaned back and I thought, how can I deal with the problem I'm having of being able to search through all all of the different lengths of array. And I reached back into the recesses of my mind and I remembered something that I was taught in a lecture. So I dived back into my lecture notes and found something called breadth first searching. Now breadth first searching is essentially if you have a logical tree like this and here you've got two options and then here you've got like four options or whatever like that. You will go down one step and look for a solution on that step. You then go down another step and look for a solution on that step until you find a solution. Depth first will be you follow one route until it's impossible then you'd go back up and then do that essentially. But because I wasn't just looking for any solution I wanted the biggest possible solution. Breadth first was more the route I needed to go and that involved using queues. Queuing shoes. Queues. Now a queue is exactly what it sounds like. But when you take it out, you only ever take the one at the front of the queue. And so I looked on the internet and found a way of implementing this kind of system and I jumped into solving that problem again. And it wasn't long until I had a solution that would work. It took a little bit of fine tuning and a little bit of debugging around the outside to make sure the logic was sound. But I had a system that would search for the maximum length of the holiday. It would search for eight and then it would search for all of the possible sevens. And then it would search in those sevens for all of the possible sixes and so on and so forth until it found an answer. Once I was happy with it and it didn't actually take me two hours to finish, I gave the solution to Codility. Now Codility is very good at testing your code. It doesn't just test it a couple of times, it tests it a lot and it tests it in lots of different ways. It tests whether you can get the right answers in normal scenarios and then in scenarios where you're like a little bit more stretched and the data's a little bit weird so they try and catch your system out. And they also test it for speed so that it doesn't take too long to compute if they give you in a million digit long string. So relatively confident, I submitted my answer and I lay back and I was like, tell me how I did. I think I did pretty good. And it turns out I didn't. The Codeality Challenge is very hard. It's very, very hard. And I only got 20% out of 100. In some scenarios, I got the logic right, but in some scenarios, I was one off of the right answer. And knowing that in some scenarios, and only some scenarios, I was one out of the correct answer is so infuriating. And that breaks me inside because I just want to know 
where it is that my logic falls over. But I never profess to be a perfect programmer. I got some wrong. Kills me, but I did. There's nothing I can do about that. But where my solution really fell over was in the performance stakes. The problem with a queue and a breadth first tree is that it takes a lot of memory and running to find solutions when the tree grows in size can take a very, very long time. And I basically lost all of the marks possible for performance. But to be honest with you, looking back now, I can't figure out a better way of doing it. But Codility also shows you how well you did compared to everyone else. And it turns out 71% of people got 10 out of 100. 8% of people got 20 out of 100, and that was me. Hello. So that's how I did. That's the Codility Challenge. Does it look interesting? If so, go into the description down below and go and have a try for yourself. Go and have a go, and then come back and tell me how you did. Honestly, I think the best way of learning how to program is by getting your hands dirty and just getting your teeth into some problems. It doesn't matter how hard the problems are or how easy they are. It's about how you solve the problem in your head. And as you solve these problems, you will be able to become better at solving problems, and you'll just be able to tackle more and more problems. I believe Codility Codility also has like tutorial steps so they can show you certain things like how to do certain searches and things like that. So they might be worth checking out as well, although I haven't looked at them myself. But that is my advice to people who want to learn how to program. Don't spend your entire life reading books about how to program and about how to write certain languages and about how to add numbers together in a different language. Programming is very easy. Very easy. Solving problems is very hard. If you can't think of them problems yourself, the Codeology Challenge is a really, really good one. Officially endorsed by Jamie. And just to be clear, this is all my own opinions. Codeology doesn't even know who I am. I discovered them because one of the steps in the interview processes I went through for my year in industry, one of the steps for one of the companies involved doing one of the Codeology Challenges. So I hope you go out there and I hope you try the Codeology Challenge out for yourself. And I hope you come back and let me know how you did and if it was helpful. If you enjoyed this video or you enjoy programming videos in general, then please do let me know. And if there really is anything you want to know about programming or if there's anything you want me to make a video about, in general then let me know in the comments down below it's the best place to do it or get in touch with me on twitter or google plus or tumblr or god knows what facebook why the hell not if this gets a good response then i will happily tackle the next challenge in the list and i'll film it and obviously make another video for you guys if you find it interesting that's all for this video it's a little bit different and i'm sorry for those of you out there who don't like programming although i guess if you don't like programming you probably haven't got to this point yet so thank you very much for watching this video ladies and gentlemen get out there and start solving some problems i'll catch you later Okay then, so I am about to start the test. This is the screen that's presented to you. You can select the programming language you're going to choose here.